Recording in progress. Hi, everybody. This is episode two for the tool training workshop. Today, we're talking about hand tools, screwdrivers, hammers to be exact. And of course, with every training, we do have our liability statement. Please understand that these videos serve as a guide to our community to introduce the tools of our craft safely and educationally for our theater practitioners. And at no point are the Center for Applied Drama and Autism, the Inclusive Chatter Network, Kent State University, or myself liable for any injury related to tool handling. This is simply a guide and a training aid. All tools should be handled with care and respect. Always consult the tool manual before using them and only use tools with appropriate safety equipment and supervision. Let's dive right in. First, we're gonna talk about screwdrivers. They come in so many shapes and sizes and types. But first, let's talk about safety. Screwdrivers are the number one misused tool in the workplace according to the National Safety Council. What does that even mean? Well, it means that every tool has an intended job and when we use them in ways that they were not intended, people get hurt. Screwdrivers should not be used as a pinch bar, a punch, a wedge, or a pry bar. These actions can lead to having the screwdriver slip and puncture you or someone else or cause the metal shaft on the screwdriver to break. Ouch! Always use proper safety equipment like glasses and sometimes gloves depending upon the project. Pre-drilling a pilot hole is very important as well. Let's talk about the parts of a screwdriver. You're probably asking what some of those words I just said on the last slide mean. Well, we have the handle, which is usually wood or plastic on most screwdrivers. And this has its own construction, but deep inside, sometimes there is iron fixed into the handle to keep the screwdriver from being broken away from the handle. The shank, that part I was talking about earlier that can snap, is the middle part of the screwdriver here. And the lower part or the tip is where it attaches from handle to tip. This means that it does not move separately and is usually made of carbon steel. So when it turns, the whole instrument turns. The blade or tip is the lower part of the shank and it is also hardened and tempered so that the little spokes or the little blades on it don't bend or snap when you're turning the screws. There are so many types of screwdrivers and some of the ones that you're going to encounter in theater are these. The common ones, a Phillips screwdriver, which has this interesting hexagon, like four pointed star here. Uh, and let's see, where's my good one? And a flathead screwdriver, which has a flat head and has one with equally long wedge. A trox, which is a star-like bit. A hexagonal screwdriver, which funny enough, you will also find not only are they in screwdrivers, but they are in something called hex keys. And when you're putting together furniture, sometimes they send you a hex key to fit the particular screws that you may use because it has that hexagon shape on the end of either side. And so just like with a screwdriver, you twist and twist and twist, and it gives you the same action as turning a screwdriver. Then you may see if you wear glasses or make jewelry or your parents have watches or sometimes special tiny clocks. Jewelers and watchmakers screwdrivers are very, very tiny. They're also very useful for electrical work and components that may be on computers. A Robertson or square tip screwdriver is a little less common, but they look like a little box on the end of your screwdriver. Magnetic screwdrivers are very helpful. They often have very long shafts, even longer than this one. And mechanics like them because the tip of their screwdriver is magnetic and it will grab the screws and keep them in place while you're trying to work super far away from yourself. So these are really helpful if you have to work in a long space where your arm can't fit, but you need to get the screwdriver in there. And then lastly is torque. Torque screwdrivers are also very helpful they have a ratchet-like 
uh, ability, which means they can get really tight into the screw and they won't come out. What is a pilot hole? I mentioned that it would be helpful sometimes to drill a pilot hole. Well, it is a hole that is pre-drilled in a project so that you can guide the screw through the material with ease and safety. Often you will drill into wood without a pilot hole and you risk splitting the lumber. So as you can see, I have pilot holes here on my piece of wood. And I'll show you how to work those in a little bit. Now, we've talked about screwdrivers. Let's talk about hammers. Just like ham screwdrivers, hammers come in so many shapes and sizes and finding the right one for the job is very important for your safety. Hammer safety. Always wear protective goggles when using a hammer. Hammering nails into wooden objects can sometimes create shrapnel or splinters that come off of the piece of work that you're using. As splinters are released, they can hit you in the eyes and protective goggles will protect your eyes from that happening. Inspect the head. What does that mean? Prior to using a hammer, inspect the head of the hammer, this piece, and make sure it's not loose. All hammers consist of a head, and a handle, and we'll talk about the parts in a minute. And sometimes, over time, if they're very old, the hammer can come loose, and you don't want to hit something very hard and have the hammer fly off and hit somebody else. Make parallel strikes. If you're trying to drive a nail into an object or surface, you should strike the nail so that the head of the hammer is parallel to the top of the nail, which means, here's your nail, parallel, okay? Wear gloves. You should wear protective gloves when using a hammer. Most hammer-related injuries either involve hands or eyes because when you're swinging this hammer, sometimes your hand might be in the way and, oh, there goes my finger. So you gotta watch what you're doing. Sometimes wear gloves, make sure your gloves fit really well so that you can work with your hammer without getting your gloves caught in anything. And you choose the right size hammer for the job. You don't need a sledgehammer to put nails in a wall. A smaller hammer will do. So you make sure that you can identify your types of hammer and use the correct one when necessary. What are types of hammers? Oh my gosh, did you know that there are so many? Well, these are different types of hammers like a sledgehammer, a knife edge hammer, mechanics hammers, Tool making hammers, claw hammers, weld chipping hammers, lineman's hammer, dead blow hammers, ball peen hammers, brick hammers, and the list goes on and on. There's even more that aren't shown here. But what hammers do we use in theater? We use a traditional claw hammer, which is what I've been holding up. And that claw hammer has this little claw here. That's why it's a claw hammer. And it can be used to pull nails out of boards if you need to. And it makes a rocking motion when you're doing it. And it has a nice flat head. And we have a ball paint hammer. This one's a little heavier than my claw hammer, but it doesn't have the claw, so it can't pull anything out of its out of wood. Then we have a sledgehammer, which is even heavier. And the sledgehammer is for really hitting hard into heavy, needed, necessary objects into concrete, into metal, it can be very useful. And then we have the lightest hammer of them all. Well, at least of the four. This is a rubber mallet. For me in paint and theater, I use these to close my paint cans. If I were to use one of these big heavy hammers, it would put dents in my cans. So I like this guy to seal my paint cans and tap gently all the way around. If you need a project that you don't want to put dings or divots in, you might wanna try the rubber mallet first. What are the parts of a hammer? Especially traditional curved claw hammer because this is the hammer you will use the most. So you have the throat, which is this piece where I'm wrapping my fingers around. You have the face which you always wanna make sure isn't dinged up or chipped really badly. You have the neck right here on the inside. 
You have the cheek of the hammer. This whole metal piece is the head. This part is the claw. This section where the handle connects to the hammer is called the eye. And then you have your handle, which often has grips or is curved in a way when it's a wooden hammer to fit your hand perfectly. So let us jump to, and if you have questions, please email me at this email below. But let us jump to looking at this in person. So I have my safety glasses and those go on first. And we have several different types of screwdrivers. As you can see, they come in all different shapes and sizes and lengths. And they can be used for so many different tool uh, jobs for theater and other work. So you can see that so many different types. And of course, our hex keys, which is a big bundle of different size keys. Why would we make things with different size tips and different size shank lengths? Why would we do that? See the difference? These are all Phillips head screwdrivers. Well, that is because we have all different kinds of screws. Did you know that? So we have teeny tiny little screws that need teeny tiny little bits because if you use the wrong size, it won't fit and it won't twist right. So this bit is much smaller and we can twist our screw in by twisting our hammer or our, our hammer, our screwdriver into the screw. But some of our bit, our screw heads have much larger spaces. And so we need a larger screw a bit. And see, you simply insert and twist. Lefty loosey, which means you're loosening it. If you turn it to the left, which is this hand, and righty tighty, this hand. So if you want to get your screw tighter, you need to turn to the right. If you want to take your screw out, turn to the left. Another cool trick that my dad showed me, if you don't remember left and right, is you hold up your fingers and make an L. And the one that makes the L is your left. The one that makes a backwards L is your right. I thought that was very helpful and sometimes I still use it. So we have different heights, we have different types, and each screw has a different job. Some are for wood, some are for concrete, some even go into metal. And then there are other kinds of screws. This is called an eye screw. Sometimes you can hang things from these screws and see, we often have to use our fingers and my pilot hole that I drilled to twist an eye screw into my board. See how easy that's going in? I just twist to the right and then look, it goes in because I pre-drilled a hole. And then now, I could hang something from my eye screw. Then, again, with a pilot screw hole built, drilled in, I can place a tiny screw in there. See the tiny screw? And I can find the right screw bit for the job. And with ease, I just twist to the right and I put my screw into my board. And because of that pilot hole, I am not having to fight with my screw. So you should always make sure that you're being very careful. See, I have my safety glasses, because what if the wood broke and it flew up in my eye? Or what if the screw broke and flew back and hit me in the eye? You also want to make sure you're being very careful. I would lay this on the table before I started working. You can see, there you go. Do this better. There you go. And then keeping my fingers out of the way, I could screw my screw in. But hey, I put it in the wrong place. So we just go to the left and we unscrew our screw by twisting. How cool is that? So many different uses for screws. 
and we use them a lot in theater. And then we have these big ones that are lag bolts. But look, it has a single line in it. You know what that means? This can be taken out or used with a flathead screwdriver, which is the one like this. And it fits inside and it twists left or right, just like our Phillips screws. Isn't that kind of cool? Well, then we have our hammers. So when you're looking at your hammers, this is the claw hammer. Hammers are used for putting nails into things. So nails come in all different shapes and sizes too. I have a giant finishing nail. Finishing nails have tiny little heads. Different types of nails have different type of heads. Some of them are big and flat. Some of them are super tiny like these guys. And some of them have little bits of plastic because they're used in a nail gun that shoots pressured air. But today we're gonna look at these guys. Little tiny finishing nail, big, big finishing nail. See how thin one nail is and thick the other is? So we don't wanna use a heavy duty hammer like the sledgehammer with these guys. We wanna use a regular claw footed hammer. So why do we need to be careful? Because when we're putting nails in, we have to make sure that we hold our nail steady. We don't really want to pre-drill the hole first. So we want to make sure that we're getting a nice parallel tap. Keep your taps nice and close. Let the hammer do the work for you. So hold your hammer by the handle here. See my handle? You don't want to hold it up here. You're not getting a full swing. And so the hammer is heavier at the front and lighter at the back so that when we are tapping, see I'm parallel to my nail, I am getting, and now that I can, it can stand on its own, I can move my fingers out of the way and hold my project away from it. And if it moves like that, you can make sure that you're putting it back into place. You just smack. Okay? Same with the tiny nail. Now be very careful. Don't get too far away. That'll keep you from smashing your fingers. And now my nail is in. And nice straight wax. See, hammers are easy and we use them a lot for different things. The fun one in theater when we're finished building a show or a set is that we can use the sledgehammer to take things apart. But when doing this, I recommend that you are wearing all of your safety equipment, glasses, gloves, and a hard hat. And you need to be working with a team that knows how to demolish and take apart scenery safely and efficiently. So hopefully this helps you when you are building furniture or you're putting together cars or racetracks or any kind of kits that you might get at a hobby store. They all have tools and all of those tools have different purposes and they do different jobs. And we will eventually get into what kind of things we can build with these tools. I hope that you use these safely and look for our handout for your book soon. And I hope that you have a fantastic week. If you have questions, please email me if you would like me to talk about any specific tools. Also, feel free to drop that comment in the chat or the email, and I will be happy to talk with you about them. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.